system approaching perfection. We'll walk deeper into the belly of the beast if it means I'm able to further limit rest. All right, this is Danny. I'm here with The Crypto Show, and I'm talking with Darnell Washington. Hi there. How are you? Uh, Darnell Washington is a extreme Bitcoin supporter. Wait a minute. No. No. What's that? Bitcoin is bullshit. Bitcoin is bullshit. We love to get uh, other perspectives on, on the show. You yes. know, We love to hear all kinds of things. And I think that uh, Bitcoiners should actually listen to you, whether they believe you or not, just so that they can get the perspective uh, of, of what your opinion is, and maybe this is the opinion of other people widely, and this can be our attack vector, and these are the things that we need to fix. So it, uh, tell me what you think about Bitcoin and why it's not secure. Well, Bitcoin is the best of the worst, okay? That's, let's get that started right out of the bat. There are a lot of security and a lot of vetting that's been done behind the, the Bitcoin technologies, but what I'm really talking about is that cryptocurrency as a whole is really something that I think a lot of people are looking at as their way, the alternative, the next best thing, the next alternative. And you know, it's more of a flash in the pan. It's more of a fad. There's a lot of people who are trying to get into new and emerging technologies or trying to do something new. But there's a lot of different challenges that you have with being able to interface not only with blockchain and cryptocurrencies but the environment you know uh, the amount of hacking and the cyber attacks that's going on it's really people are not as well educated to being able to use cryptocurrencies and to be able to buy and to trade as they really need to so my purpose of why I say bullshit on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is that unless you become formally trained and educated in how to protect your wallet it's how to not trust the uh, third party people who are trying to sell you, but to do due diligence to understand, just like someone should do with the stock market. You know, they should know who they're buying, they should know what are the capabilities of having them being robbed of their transactions. What's the due diligence that you need to do to make sure that your hardware is secure, that you're using to process and to mine Bitcoin and to protect your wallets? That's really what I'm here to do is right. to provide a level and, of education. And, and also, like protecting yourself online. You know, you're, if you're using a credit card, you're opening yourself up to hacking a lot easier than Bitcoin and not just hacking of say stealing that transaction but stealing your entire identity and, and this is where I think that Bitcoin is a great tool because it's a push payment system rather than a pull payment system so you're not required to give your social security number your you know any information really you don't need to online so I think Bitcoin is really a good tool for that uh, what, what do you think? Well, I think that as far as the kinds of protections and controls and everything is open to cybersecurity attacks and vulnerabilities and identity theft. But one of the things that happens is that there are various levels of controls that are built into the financial industry, such as zero responsibility. The FDIC protects your online accounts and your transactions. For, you know, normal day-to-day -day people, the FDIC will protect your banking and your checking accounts and your savings for up to $250,000 per. Mm -hmm. But in the blockchain world and in the Bitcoin world there's no levels of protection if your wallet gets stolen even though you might be able to freeze it or to do other areas then you're still susceptible to a lot of areas and the other important part well no uh, no let me on uh, for the consumer yes but what what about the vendor who is easily susceptible to a chargeback I can sell you my product and you can be just a jackass and, and charge it back and then I'm stuck out so what about equal protection for the, the vendor and the customer. Well, the customers that use debit cards, where people are using that as opposed to using a credit card, are atoning themselves to having the immediate withdrawal from their bank, and unless it was proven to be fraudulent, you don't have any levels of protection. Credit cards are a little bit different mm -hmm. because you do have a vendor chargeback capability, but one of the things that I look at as far as the insurability, as far as if you do have fraudulent activity that's detected on your account, Identity theft is, is, is very prob prominent and prevalent, but it's not only being used from the financial world with your banking and your electronic transactions, but there have been da various data breaches of your health records, your work records, your employment histories, to the point that identity theft and privacy, we almost have to consider it to be a lost art because once it's gone, you can never get it back. Right. And right. so I think that identity theft I know that my identity has been compromised at least five or six different times, and any one of them that once I have one identity and it's compromised, it can be reused. Right. So I think that my area of the anonymity and the protections that you get by cryptocurrency, 
uh, it's somewhat negligible because the fact is that I don't have any identity that I can hold private anymore. All right. Um, so we are here at a crypto cannabis conference. Um, how does you know what do you have to say apply to cryptocurrencies and cannabis? Well, my area is as far as um, as I'm not a consumer of cannabis products. Neither am I. <laughs> I do believe that as far as the legalization of cannabis is something that is on the national agenda and it's on the national radar. And me myself, I am pro legalization of right. cannabis and I do believe that I can be of good benefit because of the level of education I have in cybersecurity and mm -hmm. being able to protect people's not only their identities but their data and the information of their customers to protect them from cyber thefts and data breaches and information pilferage that I think that we can apply that same technology to the cannabis industry and because there are just so many people that get caught up in the fad the crypto currencies which yeah. is a fad and cannabis I know is something that's very well entrenched and on its way to becoming legalized I think that we can help yeah. people to usher in a more safe way to have transactions and to being able to protect their money and that cryptocurrency is right. not the way to do it well until I mean in, until it's legal federally um, I would argue that it is uh, especially for people who use cryptocurrency I mean who use credit cards yes for one you can't use a credit card in all dispensaries some dispensaries actually do have the ability to accept credit cards yes. I know of one in Aspen I'm not uh, familiar with what's going on around here mm -hmm. but I don't think that everybody wants to use their credit card because they don't want to have that that transaction associated with their bank you know maybe you you buy some weed from a dispensary and maybe chase decides to shut your bank down mm -hmm. or report to your job you know those those you don't want that out there so you want an anonymous way mm -hmm. to transact digitally what alternative is there to to cryptocurrency to do that you mean besides using cash Bes well maybe you don't want to use cash yeah. not everybody wants to carry cash well I think that what happens is that as far as cash being able to be reported it has something that can be tracked something that can be regulated and it can be enforced if you get robbed of your cash mm -hmm. you can at least report it to someone who will likely do something about it if someone steals your crypto wallet you really have very little recourse so the anonymity of what happens as far as people who want to be discreet there's other areas and we can go into a long dissertation as far as about well, privacy if somebody but, steals my wallet full of cash I'm not going to get that back either well not really <laughs> but there are people who will go to to prosecute and to at least investigate that crime mm -hmm. when you, your crypto wallet gets stolen and you call the authorities and say my Bitcoin wallet has been stolen then the um, course, no they will actually do they will actually investigate that 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 happened four years ago at the Texas Bitcoin conference they were uh, they were robbed of thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars were and uh, the FBI did investigate that the FBI got on it right away and started investigating it and they tracked it back to someone in New Orleans yes but what we were referring to is the abilities to really have a high level of prosecution where right. what they're trying to do and they have the forensics examiners and the resources to actually go after these to the area of where like Visa or a payment yeah. card or a credit card industry they have vast amounts of resources and they work very closely yeah. with banks and law enforcement to do that you even though there is art of the legal and the law enforcement authorities to enter into areas where they will investigate it mm -hmm. those are very far in between as far as in their levels of investigation whereas people have a broader sense of being able to investigate financial crimes that occur with credit cards and right. you know there is actually groups that exchange threat intelligence information yeah. about people who are doing scamming against the financial industry and they do have people who do information sharing and analysis on those areas and they're right. very small in the crypto industry so well what advice would you have for people who do intend on using crypto and will continue I mean a lot of us myself included my my income is fully in cryptocurrency at this point okay all of my income is in, in cryptocurrency I basically abandoned my other business because I enjoy cryptocurrencies uh, what what it what advice would you have for me or anyone else like that well I think that you should hire me 
to come in and to take a look at your cybersecurity posture to make sure that you've minimized your risk exposure and your threats from your mobile phones, your home computing environments, the areas where you broadcast any personal information or to identify where all your information is currently stored. Right. To make sure that you're not profiled as a high value asset and a target so that you are going to be able to have multi-factor authentication, mm -hmm. token-based encryption, and cybersecurity for your crypto wallet. Yep. I think that you should make sure if you don't already have those things to the level that you're confident beyond a shadow of a doubt because you have a lot to well, lose. Well, I, I, I heard uh, what you were saying about Trezor and I, I believe it was uh, somebody had bought one Trezor on eBay. Well, the guy didn't change the seed key. Like it, it wasn't actually Ledger or Trezor who sold that. Mm -hmm. It was a, a second party or third party who sold it and kept the seed key. Yes. Um, I don't use... I don't really use those either. I have a Trezor, a Ledger, and a Keep Key. They, they were given to me. I actually use something called Billfold, and it's okay. this—it's a metal box that mm -hmm. I put my seed keys into. Yes, and that's that's what I use. It's offline, you, and you know. But you when go, you but you, when you do put your seed keys online to being able to transact it, you risk your systems open to exposure, and that have your devices have they been trusted? Have they been scanned for interoperability for malware that could intercept those seed keys over the transmission media where you broadcast to go from your offline state to your online are those communication systems protected to your I guess host? those are things I need to to check into. They it sounds like are. you need to start a business where you can help protect people with cryptocurrency and work with them. Well, instead. we actually already do. And that's and, one of the areas okay, that well, <laughs> I think that even though while we're able to assist people in educating the market as to why cryptocurrencies are bad, that's similar to the areas as far as, you know, we look at being able to protect those that already do mm -hmm. and are already heavy, heavily invested, such as yourself. But then again, for those people who are new, who are novices to the business, who think that this is a long-term save-all, be-all, I'm just here to educate them, to let them know that there are threats and vulnerabilities mm -hmm. that they really should be taken about and that they can... Uh, if they have the risk posture is that they can afford to lose that money that's in that uh, Bitcoin and fully invested then I think that that's okay but if they cannot they should clearly be educated to this is what a reasonable process it, that anyone should do before they become involved and heavily invested in Bitcoin oh, awesome um, do, you, do you have a name of the service that people can contact and where, where can they learn more and maybe reach out to you yeah the name of our company is secure experts incorporated and I'm the president and CEO and awesome. we do information security and we do cybersecurity consulting as well so we do believe that you know we would like for you to be protected we know that mm -hmm. cryptocurrency does have a life it's living yeah. and breathing now but we know that there's a lot of vulnerabilities about it and that's why we think that if people don't um, have those proper security controls and those things in place right I think that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is bullshit for those that shouldn't be able to use it. There you go. Okay. Bitcoin is bullshit. That's right. See the shirt? <laughs> All right. All right, man. Thank Thanks. you very much.